When was the last time that someone said something to you that made you think, that made you feel something, that made you believe? I'm home! Honey, at the tone, it's me, hon. At the tone, I'm home, hon. Honey, I'm foam! Rubber! Honey, I'm prone! Honey, I'm prone! No, honey, I'm a buttered scone! Honey, I'm a buttered scone! No, I'm not a buttered scone, honey! Honey, I'm homo, and we gotta talk. What's for dinner? John Paul Sartre, I know you're dead, but that don't take you out of my head. John Paul Sartre, you are in a rigor mortis state, but I still want you to take me out on a date. We can go to the Seine, or the Rue Madeleine. We can go in a car to the Gare St. Lazare. We can walk, we can talk, deface your tombstone with chalk. I'll dress up like a slut in a sleazy boudoir. I'll say, hey, shut up. So what about Simone de Beauvoir? John Paul Sartre, fill me with Autra. Or spit in my face and call me a Tartra. Come back from the dead. Fill me with dread. Whisper sweet nothingness into my head. Now, I once put forth this proposition, that the only proper punctuation point in this world ought to be a tiny clock at the end of every sentence indicating the exact time that sentence was written or said. Why, it is as if nothing mattered but context, and I guess nothing does. Thus, anything that marks time frightens me. When the context decays, I don't perceive any space between beginning and end, only a terror as to what is lost. But hey, let's be modern here, not nihilistic. Let the new physics serve our new needs. The complex allows for everything. If desire can be hate, then the dream can be real. A startled heart can act just like a stream threaded through our mutual gaze. It ties this lie called time up into a rock. You loaded your gun with it once and blew this jaded mind of mine away. I know what you women want. I know what you women want. <laughs> Who cares what you women want? I know what I want. Sexual dominance based on my superior strength. Convincing you that I'm trying real hard not to lose my temper. And that the only reason why I'd ever bust your nose, bust your eye, throw you into a wall, is because I'm so sensitive. I can't stand to be misunderstood. You fall for that every single time. I wanted to blow the whistle on some of my brethren in regard to their attitude about women. 
and uh, I'll ring a bell in some women's minds in terms of avoid this guy. We have a tendency to overuse some words, don't we? Like love, like hate, like Jesus Christ, like kill. Ah, that guy, I could kill that guy. I could kill that guy. I could kill you. I want to kill you. Could you kill me? Could I kill you? Do you mean it? When do you really mean it? When do I know when to believe you? I swear, I will never do anything to hurt you. I swear, I won't make you wash my socks or eat disgusting cheese. I swear, I won't tamper with your Grateful Dead records or malign your sense of morality. I swear, I won't go completely insane and kill your mother by poisoning her with rhubarb leaves and sit around with all my friends she never liked laughing hysterically and smoking cigars. I swear, I won't. You can trust me. I love you. Words can be dangerous and precious. Say something to hurt a person or condemn a person. Or you could say something to praise a person and make them feel rather better. Welcome to the United States of Poetry. I got a rock and roll mythology. I got a total apocalypse mythology. I got the most post hysterical of poetry. And if it ain't coming at you, it's breezed on by. I got the heavy duty political intent. I got the worm far free form. I'm a new kind of. I got breezy ways of bop and raise when the word explodes the mother load is where i'm at and it's right here but you cannot see it doesn't matter anyway since you cannot breathe you see the words mean they're putting on the squeeze they can strangle you hey what's that mean say what he say say what he said he said he said he said he said what he said go on and say he said that's what he said to say that's what he said that's what he said to say he said oh oh open up the book with your finger hook and scan it with your television eyes Television eyes. Ah, stick it with your eyes. Stick out your tongue. Memorize it. It's just you reading. The book is breathing. Yeah, well, there was a gay bar blowing up on April 25th with a pipe bomb, and a police are listing it as a faggot assault. But JFK Jr. was on the front page as a hunk that flunked. And David Upon, the boy who was set afire for saying no to drugs, was burned over 80% of his body. But Mike Milken was on the front page for crying over a $600 million fine. Poor baby. And a black man was killed while surrendering to two white police officers. But Donald Trump was on the front page as a man who can buy his cake and eat it too. And movie stars continue to take precedence over justice. And politicians' personal lives continue to take precedence over the homeless. And names like Mike Milken, JFK Jr., and Donald Trump are just fancy names for irrelevance. It's about a columnist in the town I live in that I don't like. He says a lot of stuff behind the back. He's a sneaky snake of a son of a bitch, and I don't like him. Ah! Liz Grizzard, I'm calling you out. I read your column, and it made me puke. If you're just boring, it would be all right, but you found old fires that belie your sloth. You're a knee-jerk, myopic, supercilious, half-baked, neo-closet, white supremacist, Mixed drink swilling, country club Reaganite, petty bourgeois woman bashing, beat music listening, pork barrel, good old boy, homophobic cheese dick. That's all I got to say on the subject. Ah! There's only one voice accepted in this country as the voice of truth. That is the expressionless, toneless, accentless, white male voice. Look at newscasters. Good evening. I'm from nowhere. Usually, you'll accept the word of a Caucasian quicker than, uh, hi, I'm Pablo Guzman. Uh, I, uh, you know, it's probably talking about some kid slipped on ice thing, you know. Oh, here's Dan Rather. Oh, he's got something important to say, you know. If you have anything that smacks of any kind of culture, any kind of accent, put down to the vast white 
audience. You say Bacardi, Bacalao, Burrito, too many people in a car, too many kids, taco, quesadilla, too loud, sancocho, too short, too gaudy, too baroque, rococo, you look but you don't see, mustachioified, hairy lipified, polyesterized, Jesus in a candle burning, velvet Jesus, 3D Jesus, glow in the dark Jesus, project living, low riding, mole on the cheek, greasy black back hair, Latino Barbie doll, you hear but you don't listen, we are Flamenco feeling, mambo mouthing, coochie frito butted. We are the cafe con leche mamis, papis ricos, raza suave, jugosa, sabrosa, deliciosa, hermosa. Don't take my salsa kisses, papaya days, merengue nights, and just when you were thought it was safe. Welcome back to the spick of television, drug dealing, puta thief, pato, lazy hooded, janitoring maids, knife wielding, spick. A spick is a spick by any other name, it's still a spick. Vengan todos mi hermanos y hermanas. All the mambo kings and cumbia queens, Aztec lords, Inca princesses, every Hernandez and Fernandez. It's time to make our move. It's time to take our place. This was an exorcism. <laughs> an exorcism of all the stereotypical things and all the labeling and prejudice and self-hating and all the ugly things that that i feel i carry around with me or some hispanic people carry around them and you have to smack it around every time and knock it out of yourself to reach another level heather bbbb the african daughter down for wisdom and universal order i look beyond this material reality only to find jealous mcs want to battle me they whine cry kick fight fuss but they fail to realize lyrics are must. Whether from the East Coast or the West, take that gold off your chest and make your lyrics fresh. Pick your afro, take off the kango, put down the pork and peel the mango. Cause yes, Heather B picks up the mic and practice. Radiating wisdom, truth and blackness. Negative DJs, I don't attract this. You're dissing black women and dealing with slackness. You're a hypocrite. You can't test my lyrics. I walk in knowledge while you waddle in ignorance. Words are dangerous. It's not the words that's dangerous, it's the actions that are taken behind the words. Words can kill people. When a policeman tells you to shut up, put your hands on the hood, or we'll break your face. If you don't do it, you're going to get your face broken. It's a verbal command that is a predicate to action. Words can kill people. Words can start wars. Words are dangerous. I was on my way to see my woman, but the law said I was on my way through a red light. If you saw my woman, you could understand if I did, but I didn't. It wasn't about no light, it was about my ride. If you saw my ride, you could dig that too, you dig? Sunroof, stereo, radio, black leather bucket seats sit low. You know the body's cool, but the tires are worn. Ride when the hard times come, ride when they're gone. In other words, the light was green. Up to the window come the law with his hand on his gun. What's up, what's happening? I said, I guess that's when I really broke the law. He said a routine, step out the car. A routine, assume the position. Put your hands up in the air. You know the routine like you just don't care. License and registration. Deep was the night and the light from the North Star on the car door. I could see deja vu, we've been through this before. Why did you stop me? Somebody body had to stop you. I watch the news, you always lose. You're unreliable, that's undeniable. This is serious, you could be dangerous. I could wake up in the morning without a warning. My world could change. Think your eyes, all depends on the skin. All depends on the skin you're living in. New York City, they got laws. Can no brothers drive outdoors in certain neighborhoods and certain cars, me and around certain types of people? Yeah, they got laws. All depends on the skin. All depends on the skin you're living in. All depends on the skin. All depends on the skin you're living in. All depends on the skin. All depends on the skin you're living in. Think your all depends on the skin. Think your skin. All think, think, think. All depends on the skin. All depends.
Nigga Week in Blues is about bridging the gap between the Puerto Rican culture and the African American culture, which they say are two different cultures, but sometimes they are one and the same. Yo, yo soy Boricua. No soy moreno, pero mi pelo es kinky y curly, mi skin no es negro, pero it can pass. I don't care what you say, you black, but I ain't black. Every time I walk by a white woman, she holds her purse just a little bit tighter. Nine out of ten times, if I'm not in front of a gun, I'm gonna be behind one. I just come out of Jerry's den, coconut spray off my new shape up, sailing down the block. I'm looking slim and I'm looking trim, and my homeboy Ari said, Coño, papo, me parece como moreno, brother. Word up, man. You look like a stone black kid, man. I wonder why. Because you's a black man. Damn, I'm suffering from the young black man's plight, the old white man's burden, and I ain't even black, man. A black man I am not, ain't never really was. Boricua, I am black like me. Sounds to me like you got the nigga we can lose, brother. Sometimes I think I should write a letter to all the people who are not me. That is, sometimes I think it's my American duty to write a letter to all the people who are not me, who have nothing in common with me. I don't know. Just to see if they would write back. And if they would write back just to see what they would say. I sit in cafes and I wonder who all these people can be, who all these people are who are not me have nothing in common with me. I see strangers slurping their expressos in an out-of-town fashion. I ask them for their names and addresses. They never refuse me. <laughs> Over the years, I have amassed thousands of names and addresses. The first line of my letter reads, Hello, I'm a black. I haven't written any more than that. When we are censored, we are crippled. We are neutered. We are rendered impotent by those who fear. And that's the only way our government can make us think that they're powerful, by rendering us neutral, by taking our voices away. of the world is credited to white folks, yet the crimes of the world is blamed on blacks. No. You ask me if I have ever been to prison. Been to prison? Your world of murderers and thieves, of hatred and jealousy, of famine and wars, of death. And you ask me if I have ever been to prison? I answer, yes. I am still there trying to escape. I believe that if you're teaching history, deal with straight up facts, no mystery. Teach the student what needs to be taught, because black and white kids both take shorts. When one doesn't know about the other one's culture, ignorance soups down like a vulture. See, no one told you about Benjamin Banneker, a brilliant black man that invented the almanac. Can't you see what KRS is coming at? With Eli Whitney, Holly Selassie? 
Granville Woods made the walkie-talkie. Louis Latimer improved on Edison. Charles Drew did a lot for medicine. Garrett Morgan made the traffic lights. Harriet Tubman freed the slaves at night. Madam C.J. Walker made the straightening comb, but you won't know this if you weren't shown. The point I'm getting at, it might be harsh, is we're just walking around brainwashed. See, what I'm saying is not to diss them at all, man. We need the 89, no, 1990, no, 91 school system, one that caters to a human return, because you must learn. <laughs> some necks tonight. I want to rip my fucking skin off and be exposed to the stupid starlight. I'm a walking nerve machine. Don't get too close. I'm a jumpy kind of guy with a revolver. Don't push me around either. You know, I'm starting to use my cats as dairy animals. I milk them right over my cereal. Sure, you're saying. There's not enough milk in a cat for a whole bowl of cereal. Well, you know what? You're right. I just use a little less cereal. And when I really need a drink, I hold the cat right up to my face and suck my drink. All my friends say, hey, Todd, why are you freaking out? Why are you so tense? And I say, because it's a great goddamn time to be writing beautiful little poems and expensive little books going on and on about birds, trees, and flowers. I cry big, fat tears, stir up the phantoms of dread, Baby, baby, there are so many dead. You crawl inside my head, make it all better. Sing hush, mama, hush, food to break the sadness. Bring me a lime green dog, a pumpkin with mustache. Mold a face out of clay, stick a flag in one eye. Paint a flying girl, dance up a storm inside me. Banish the demons, sing eat, mama, eat food to break the sadness. This is a story about an African named reggae, jazz, blues, calypso, kaiso, salsa, rhythms. The father's last name was Rhythms. When the African first came to America, immigration said, what's your name? The African said, dum, 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 Immigration said, what? What's your name? The immigrant said, I am A F R I C. You're black, you're yellow, you're red, you're white, you're blue. You've got the word. Just say it. Rich, poor, straight, gay. For liberation, not only of myself, but others. In jail, in hell. It's an effective uh, attack on all the things that bug me. <laughs> you gotta get up. You gotta yell. And make my head explode. You gotta yell, scream. Primal scream. You gotta rage. You gotta be heard. One voice. Mine is only one voice of a Hispanic people. If you're deaf, if you're mute, you have to be heard. Politically and militantly and poetry. I want everybody to keep trying. You have to go, 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 stop!